Okay, um, here we go. All right, so um, we are continuing with uh, John chapter 10, and the Lord Jesus talking about um, him being the good shepherd. And so we um, learn quite a few things there about the shepherd and about uh, and the Lord Jesus uh, himself uh, laying down certain things uh, there uh, as to how, what a shepherd should be. Uh, should do and and so on and 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 especially when when the lord um, talks about himself as a good shepherd and also when he says that uh, he is not like the hireling so we we learn from that as well right what we should not be like okay so um let's read uh, from verse 7 uh, sorry verse uh, verse 11 where he says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Okay, so he's talking about uh, the sacrificial uh, ministry or the sacrificial way in which um, uh, the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. The, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Verse 12, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. So he's talking about um, in the face of danger, this is what a hireling does, uh, because a hireling does not have a sense of ownership um, uh, about the sheep. And therefore, uh, he does not care and leaves the sheep and flees. Right? Verse 13, the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Um, again, the Lord says, verse 14, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me and, and so on. Right? And um, let's go on to um, verse, uh, verse, verse 25. And Jesus, uh, this is in response to the question where they say, you know, uh, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And he says, I told you and you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name. They bear witness of me. Verse 26, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Okay, right. So we learn um, several things here uh, about the Good Shepherd, the fact that the Good Shepherd speaks to the sheep, you know, especially in verse, uh, um, uh, yeah, I think in verse 16 and also in verse 14, uh, he says, you know, I am the Good Shepherd, I know my sheep and I'm known by my sheep. And he lays down his life for the sheep. And uh, he says, uh, uh, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Okay, right. So he's talking about uh, the sheep knowing, the sheep interacting, speaking, the, uh, the shepherd knowing, and shepherd interacting, uh, talking to the sheep, uh, the shepherd leading the sheep. And uh, and also talks about how the shepherd, how the sheep know the voice of the shepherd, and how the sheep follow uh, the voice of the shepherd. Uh, so um, the good shepherd cares, the good shepherd um, protects the sheep, nurtures the sheep, um, gathers the sheep, and so on. Um, and we we saw earlier uh, in in the ministry gift of the teacher, uh, the Lord Jesus being an example that he was moved with compassion when was he moved with compassion when he saw that um the people were like sheep without a shepherd right um when they uh, he saw and then 
uh, he was moved with compassion and you see the, the, the verse after that that uh, in the same verse you know, mark 6 34 that he began to teach them right he began to minister to them he began to serve them teach them gather them together and and in fact he was being the shepherd right um so this is some these are some some uh, insights that we get about um, the lord being the shepherd similarly we we learn quite a bit from from here you know the 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 heart attitude of the shepherd um, that the shepherd uh cares for the sheep but the shepherd protects the sheep the shepherd has a sense of ownership uh, about the sheep of course the lord jesus uh you know being the creator and 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 being uh, the one who has purchased everyone by the precious blood so he owns in that sense he owns the sheep right the ones who are purchased his they are his purchased possessions we are his purchased possessions and uh, as human shepherds we are overseers of the flock um, because he is the chief shepherd and the flock belong to god right so these are some things that we uh, learn from these uh, from these verses that uh, the lord jesus being our example okay so we see some references in the old testament as well uh, about uh, the the connection between the sheep and the shepherd okay um, Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart. Now, this is what God says, and who will feed you with knowledge and understanding, right? Um, you know, you see that uh, the Lord, when he had compassion on the people, when he saw that they were like sheep without shepherd, he, he started teaching them, right? He started teaching them words where obviously spirit and life um, he knew their deepest needs and he immediately went about uh, satisfying that or addressing that deepest need right so he started teaching them so uh, similarly the 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 shepherd uh, the lord saying you know i will give you shepherds um uh, who will shepherd israel and uh, he's referring to uh, the the spiritual leaders who will feed with knowledge and understanding feed with knowledge and understanding Chapter 23 and verse 4, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they, uh, the flock, shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Okay, so um, so what, what do we draw from that? The insight that we get is that the shepherd teaches or feeds the sheep, nurtures the sheep with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge. And that results in the flock um, not being fearful because they have grown in faith, not being fearful, um, not being disappointed or dismayed um, because that because they have grown in faith and and because of the knowledge and understanding, uh, they are grounded, rooted in in something that is stronger, right? And, uh, and it says, nor shall they be lacking. They will not lack anything because of the chief shepherd, because of the words of life um, that that feeds, that spiritually feeds, nourishes other people, right? So, um, so th these are some things that we get when we look at, uh, you know, what are the practical things that the shepherd or the rules and responsibility or roles and responsibilities of the shepherd, uh, which, you know, which, which Paul writes to uh, Timothy, then we, when we put these together, then we understand, okay, uh, this is what the, uh, as a shepherd, as an overseer, this is what one is supposed to be doing. This is how one is supposed to be ministering as a shepherd, right? Okay, so in um, Numbers, Numbers 27, um, uh, we see, Let's, let's just go there, number, number 27, and it's about uh, Moses, uh, the Lord instructing Moses to um, uh, lay hands and pray over Joshua. Um, numbers 27, okay. <clears throat> okay, Numbers 27, and uh, we read, read from verse 15. Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, uh, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, Set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in before them, who may lead them out 
and bring them in that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. Right? And the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. And we know the rest, you know, that uh, he consecrates him, inaugurates him, uh, and takes him to Elias, Elias the priest, and so on. So, um, so we see here uh, the Lord saying, you know, take Joshua the son of Nun. And, um, uh, but the real need is this, right, verse 17, um, that the congregation, that the congregation of the Lord, that the people of the Lord may, be, may not be like, a sheep which have no shepherd. So, um, so he's talking about a people, a, a, a person who would lead um, the people of God, a person who would uh, who would um, lead by example, who would lead the people of God into the promise of God, into the destiny that God. That which is what Joshua did. He took them into the promised land. He took them into the uh, into the destiny that God had for the these people, and he and he did that. Right, so um, so he heard from God. He got the strategies from God. He heard God's instruction. Uh, he received and he obeyed. And uh, of course, there were challenges. And through it all, um, he led the congregation of the Lord, as Moses referred to the children of Israel, um, the, all the tribes. He he led them into uh, into battle. He led them into the, their destinies. Right. Okay. Um, Another place, uh, very interesting, that we see again uh, is in Ezekiel, which uh, talks about the shepherd or um, what a shepherd should not do. Again, um, it talks about the irresponsible shepherds and also uh, the, the true shepherd. Okay, so uh, Ezekiel 34, uh, I think we can just quickly go through um, Ezekiel 34. Okay, if you're there, verse, uh, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourself with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not, you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds hear the word of the Lord. And, uh, you know, we see some harsh things that the Lord says, right? As I live, says the Lord God, surely, because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. Okay, so um, some a real warning there, and uh, some uh, you know some very strong words from the Lord for um, you know a prophetic. Um, uh, instruction that uh, Jeremiah, you know, delivers, right? And uh, and this is what uh, this is what he receives that uh, says that these are the faults of the shepherd. You know, they have not looked out, or they have not carried out what they were supposed to do. They have looked after, or they have fed themselves. 
they have um, they are just making themselves the priority the life is centered around them and this is what they did not do they did not strengthen the weak they did not heal those who were sick um, the broken they have not bound the, and they did not bring back what was lost or gather the lost but look at this but with force uh, verse 4 but with force and cruelty you have rule them you know you see the similar thing um, in the instruction laid out by peter as well peter says um, that um, you know uh, not by compulsion uh, not for dishonest gain and not as being lords over those who are interested okay so uh, here the lord says by force and cruelty um, you have ruled them right and uh, it says that they have scattered and you have not gathered, so they have become prey for all kinds of um, uh, the beasts, and they become food. And the Lord is saying, you know, I will require, I will require my flock at their hand. You know, again, the Lord saying, these are, uh, this, this flock is mine. Okay, so um, I, I think that's, um, you know, that's. Uh, uh, that's a realization for every uh, minister of God, uh, for every pastor, for every shepherd, um, that the the flock is the Lord's. And uh, with that in mind, when we interact or minister, um, we we will realize that hey, the the flock is the Lord. So the flock belongs to the lord and therefore uh, i will i need to hold myself accountable i need to um you know uh, do those things serve in such a way that i give account right uh, and it's it's not account to any you know any person any um, human being but it's the lord himself he says i will require of the lord of the flock from their hand Okay, so um, it's something uh, you know extremely serious, right? And um, so here, time and again, uh, and I think um, you know the instruction is, of, uh, of course, it's applicable for every every minister, uh, but more so for the shepherd, more so for the shepherd, um, because here's the here's the flock and the shepherd. The shepherd is interacting and maybe on a regular basis right um, and uh, you know interacting with the people on a regular basis and the there is this tendency to uh, to either you know uh, become because of the familiarity to 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 try to rule to try to uh, to, to to try to boss over uh, and maybe it's a cultural thing uh, maybe it's a wrong example in ministry whatever it is you know, we look at scripture and we realize that we, we come to the uh, understanding that this is how the Lord looks at um, at this whole um, thing of, you know, the, the serving his people. So um, this is how the, this is what the Lord wants. Right. And uh, he says that um, they shall, you know, the, I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, which which means that. Uh, that's again a very strong word. Right? One thing is that he is saying, "Okay, I will require from I will, uh, I will require from them their hand. I need to receive. I need to, you know they are they need to be accountable." The other thing is that um, I will cause them if this continues. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep. Okay, so which means the end of you know, end of or you know um, the slowly the the influence the 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 serving and everything just comes to uh, a stop right because there is abuse and there is manipulation and force and cruelty right okay um verse 11 for thus says the lord god indeed i myself will search for my sheep and uh, seek them out um, and we see that in luke 15 uh, about the good shepherd about how the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after the one which is lost right we we see that uh, in the parable 
for thus says the Lord God, indeed, I myself will search for my sheep, seek them out as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep. So will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were sh uh, scattered on a cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them uh, to their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel. Uh, in the valleys and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture, and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel, and so on. They lie down um, and, uh, and feed in good pasture. I will feed my flock, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken, strengthen what was sick, um, but I, I will destroy the fat and strong and feed them in judgment, and so on. Um, and then he addresses the flock also, right? He says, and as for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I, will, I shall judge between the sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it too little for you? Uh, is it too little for you to have eaten up the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture and to have drunk of the clear waters that you must foul the residue with your feet and as for you and as for my fleek a flock they eat what you have trampled with your feet and they drink what you have fouled with your feet therefore thus says the lord god behold i myself will judge between the fat and lean sheep because you have pushed with side and shoulder and butted all the weak ones with the uh, horns, uh, with your horns, and scattered them abroad. Therefore, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. My servant David, he shall feed them, and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord. Um, you know, I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them, and I, the Lord, have spoken. So, um, so uh, you know, a word of um, um, a prophetic uh, declaration there, like referring to the, the ministry, the, the descendant uh, of David, you know, referring to the Lord. So, so we see that, um, you know, here that the Lord comes down on the shepherd, and then he says, you know, I myself will do this as a good shepherd. And so we have that as an example um, that he will bind up what is broken, seek that was lost, and so on. And he also judges between the sheep. I right? judges between uh, the uh, I will judge between the sheep. He says, right. So we we see all that uh, mentioned here. Um, another reference that uh, we can go to is Psalm twenty three, right, which we all know. Psalm 23, where the psalmist declares, and he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And then, of course, he goes on to testify that what he will do. Uh, or he that he will not do, he will not fear any evil for because the Lord is with with him, uh, and so on. Um, so we see the reference to uh, the good shepherd here that, that the Lord is the good shepherd. The Lord is the shepherd, and so because of that, uh, uh, the psalm is saying, "I will not be in in any kind of. Uh, I will not lack anything. I will not be in want." Um, and uh, and and these are some of the things, right? So we um, we understand that uh, uh, as the Lord Jesus, um, uh, as he ministered as the Good Shepherd, and we see the example there, and we Lord draw a lot of insights on what needs to be done and what should not be done, right? And uh, and we see it's again a serious thing, and yes, we can apply this. Uh, for all the ministry gifts, and we can apply this for anyone who is uh, serving, who's who's uh, in any kind of uh, you know spiritual ministry and or, or spiritual leadership, and uh, we can definitely uh, uh, you know apply this, uh, but also specifically for the shepherd, 
right? For the one who is called to the ministry of um, the pastor or the pastoral ministry, right? Okay. Um, any thoughts? Any any questions before we um, move on? Uh, we're going to look at uh, some instructions in you know First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus, where Paul writes and uh, uh, again, that is also something that is uh, it's a it's a broad uh, thing for every minister. But he, you know, if you if you notice, he the instruction is for specifically for people who are overseers um, in a, in a church, right, in, in Ephesus, and who are spiritual leaders, you know, the looking after leaders. So uh, looking after the people. Um, so we're going to look at that. So any questions so far? No. Okay. All good. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Let's uh, let's get uh, going. Um, let's look at uh, you know First Timothy and. Uh, Right. So um, the more I read, you know, um, um, about um, I mean about, about each of these gifts, and uh, uh, the more we see the Lord Jesus being the example, um, you we realize that uh, he, he, you know, he walked in it for a reason that we we might follow him as well, and uh, and here we see, um, you know, the the seriousness with which he. Um, he looks at the one who is ministering. Okay, uh, he's saying, "You know, I will require at the hand. Um, I will require of the flock at his hand." Right. So the seriousness with which he sees this, um, also the fact that um, um, the way the Lord looks at his people, okay, um, whom he considered considers as his flock. Um, we, we see that um, okay, someone who who are someone who are precious, someone he cares about, um, and he knows he sees the need, he sees the the broken, the the you know, and he he sees the condition, right? The hurting, the broken, the ones who um, who are lost, the ones who are seeking. And uh, and the fact that that the Lord's heart goes out, um, and the Lord expects the minister or expects the the one who's called to a, a place of uh, spiritual leadership. Well, the call is exciting. With the call is uh, you know all that. Um, uh, many times we, we 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 tend to think it's about us. Right? You know, you call to the prophet. You call to the uh, you know, evangel uh, to call to be an evangelist or call to the pastoral, and uh, many times we think, oh, it's it's uh, it must be something that I've done, something good that I've done, something right that I've done. Well, yes, um, we, you know, we've been faithful in seeking Him, probably faithful in you know equipping ourselves, uh, you know, whatever. But the fact is, the call comes from Him, right? So that's one thing. Um, uh, he, but uh, but the other aspect is that. Uh, that invitation is so that we might serve. Right? The word minister itself is the one who serves, right? That we might serve and serve in this manner, right? While the um, uh, it might go against popular trends, it might. Um, uh, I'm sure it definitely goes against uh, you know some of the uh, maybe unhealthy, toxic things that are happening. In you know in churchianity, right? Um, but but this is this is scripture, right? And this is the Lord's expectation, right? And this is the Lord's yardstick for the minister. Okay, so anytime we are tempted to think that hey, it's it's about me, it's about uh, you know it's about uh, it's all about me, then you know that that thing is shattered. Um, we, we we realize that it's 
it's it's not that and every time we we think that okay i'm in a position of leadership therefore you know i can call the shots you know and, and and of course you know we are we are we have to lead we have to be firm we have to you know all that is is true um yeah you know with the vision and all that um but you know this is the expectation from the lord right uh, that we that we serve with this uh, we serve with compassion that we serve um with the flock in mind and what is good and what is beneficial what what uh, that we esteem others better than ourselves and, and look not look out for our own benefit but for the benefit of uh, others as well and and all that you know comes together right and uh, and the fact that um, the sense of ownership you know you can misuse it can go both ways right um, we'll say okay this is the flock that god has given me yes true uh, but with that sense of ownership, also you you know you carry a great responsibility, right? Uh, with that sense of ownership, you also carry the the, uh, uh, the I mean the the mantle, and uh, which means that you serve in a way that is honorable. You serve in a way that is um, you know uh, that honors God and also honors the I'm sorry honors the, honors the people of God, right? Um, so so all this. Um, I think uh, it's 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 wonderful that the Lord has put this down, you know, very simple, very clear. Um, so while we might be tempted by this is how you know the pastor next door does it, or this is how they talk about in the pastor's fellowship, or, or this is how you know uh, popular culture and tradition is, you know, in this people group. Um, well. Well, this is what the Lord looks at, right? This is what is close to His heart, and it's it's good that we defer to that and refer, you know, fall back to that standard um, rather than anything else. Okay, okay. So let's look at First um, um, Timothy and uh, Paul writing to Timothy, and he's uh, and he's, he lists down and he says, uh, uh, "Hey, these are the qualities. These are the qualifications." Um, well, if somebody wants to serve, it's a, it's a good thing. But these are some things that we want uh, that person to have, or these are some things that should need to be developed in that person, right? Okay. So let's look at First um, um, Timothy chapter three, and it says, "This is a faithful saying." If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. Okay, so um, so Bishop, the understanding, you know, uh, we, we might come from a background where um, the word Bishop brings up all kinds of, you know, things to our mind. Maybe it, it, uh, it brings a certain uniform, it brings a certain headgear, uh, uh, you know, all that. But the fact is that uh, the word Bishop simply means uh, overseer, right? A presbyter, uh, overseer, uh, a shepherd. Uh, so uh, you know we need to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm just speaking. I'm just uh, you know taking out that verse here. Um, uh, it's uh, it, the old King James uh, refers to it as uh, over. Uh, I'm sorry, the modern King James uh, translate is, uh, translated translates this word as a uh, overseer. And uh, you know if you look at the the original Greek again, you know episcope, okay, which means uh, someone who is uh, overseeing, uh, and, and that's that's that is all there is to it. And uh, then we realize, we, and then if you look at it, right, uh, it's not a title again, uh, because um, uh, it's a role, it's a responsibility, and um, and he says here, you know, uh, he, it's it's a good work. It's a, it's it's a it's a good work, right? And uh, one thing is that we see that, well. Uh, it's Timothy who is actually overseeing the spiritual work, okay, who's pastoring this church. And uh, here is uh, Paul laying down some ins instructions for what are the qualifications for uh, a bishop, right, uh, uh, an overseer. So, uh, so it's definitely not a title, right? It's a, a responsibility. It uh, defines the work uh, more than anything, right? So. 
And this is a faithful saying, if a man desires um, to do the push, uh, to, for the, desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. And wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous. One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, meaning someone who's inexperienced or new to the, to the work, Lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Okay, so this is uh, for someone who is a who is a bishop who is uh, seeking to do uh, a bishop, obviously overseeing this, these were people who were doing the spiritual work uh, of leading people, teaching people, uh, prayer, ministering, and so on. Then um, the other uh, uh, the other list of qualifications he gives is for a deacon, the ones who were uh, diakonos, the, uh, the Greek word, uh, the ones who were taking care of the business matters of the church. Right. Um, so. Uh, for that also you see a similar uh, qualification and it'll be good for us to go through that likewise deacons must be reverent and uh, not double tongued not given to much wine not greedy for money holding the mystery of the faith with, with a pure conscience but let these also first be tested okay so he's saying we, they cannot be a novice cannot be someone uh, you know new or, or a uh, maybe a new believer, someone not mature. Uh, let them first be tested and then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Right? Likewise, their wives must be uh, reverent, not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Right. So, um, so we see, uh, um, you know, all these qualifications being mentioned here, and um, one of the things uh, mentioned here again is uh, not a novice. Sorry, uh, not a novice, not someone who is new, not someone who's experienced, uh, inexperienced. Sorry, um, lest they fall um, into pride or they become arrogant, and and uh, that becomes the downfall. So he's saying, you know, set them up for success, set them, set them up so that they thrive and do their work well. Um, and make sure. So one of the ways to do that is is to test, and and of course testing would mean maybe um, maybe a time of uh, you know um, seeing them serve, but not uh, appointing them as a spiritual leader. You know, seeing them serve as one among everyone, um, and not really appointing them, not really laying hands and saying, okay, here's so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, we are appointing them as a leader, but seeing them serve, and then that will give an opportunity to correct as well. That will give an opportunity to uh, for the person to change. And, um, you know, uh, so it's like uh, they, they might do the work, but not really carry the damage of not doing the work, right? Not really inflict or, or create a lot of confusion. So, um, so that's the uh, you know let them be tested, and uh, and he says uh, let them serve and being found uh, uh, being found blase blameless, right? So let them first be tested. Okay. Um, along with that, we see. Uh, Timothy, uh, uh, Paul writing to Timothy, and he's saying, um, you know, because we see that Timothy is also actually he's overseeing um, that particular. He's doing, uh, he's, he's shepherding rather, you know, the flock of God uh, in Ephesus, right? And uh, so 
we see some some of the instructions that Paul gives to Timothy would apply to the pastoral work as well, the pastoral ministry as well, right? So um, right from the beginning, the um, he says uh, his instruction, you know, uh, that about the doc doctrine, right? About uh, uh, the purpose of the commandment and the, and uh, the focus uh, to be on the teaching and what he would teach um, and not giving heed to fables, genealogies, which would create dispute, okay, and which would not result in godly edification. So that's another thing, you know, and, and, and the thing is, it makes sense because um, the Lord says, you know, he will, pe who will, who will, um, who will feed the people, who will feed the people with wisdom, will feed the people with knowledge and, and instruction and understanding and so if that is what is uh, uh, it, what is the objective or the end result then obviously uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, you know to treat what is being taught lightly okay to be to ensure that um, these are words that will nurture and so Paul, you know, uh, again and again, he would say, um, you, you know, you, you the, the, the uh, hold on to those patterns of uh, the sound words that you heard from me and you commit these to others as well. Right. So he would reiterate those instructions. So it makes sense because the end result is this. This is what is wanted. This is what is required. And uh, and words. Uh, or uh, the teaching, uh, which which uh, which, which are uh, go which accord with godliness, right? Teaching doctrine with accords with godliness will result in that. Um, along with that, of course, when you lead by example, right? Okay, so um, to saying um, uh, verse verse two that charge some. Uh, Remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk. So they are desiring, it goes on to say, they are desiring to be teachers, but they don't understand nor uh, what they say, the things that they affirm, and it has, the law has to be used lawfully. Okay, so if it is to just to gain reputation, it is just to, if it is to just gain a social standing, um, and then the motive is wrong, and, you know, what is being taught is not, given that importance and the weightage and it results in uh, a group of people not really ending up how they should be right um so he goes on uh, maybe if you look at verse 18 this charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have, uh, have suffered shipwreck. So you have faith and you are nourished in the words of God, but also, you know, have a, a, a good conscience, right? Which means that, you know, you're, you're sensitive, you're not searing your conscience, um, you're not, uh, you know, shutting your conscience down um, based on your motive or your wrong. Uh, or not ending up in wrong actions and and justifying it, you know, when th that that is when uh, we sear our consciences, right? When we do something and when we try to justify it and we go against the voice of the spirit, then our conscience gets seared. You know, like Hebrews three, we see that uh, uh, the sin causes deception, right? Uh, exhort one uh, yourself, uh, exhort one another while it is called day, and uh, do not be deceived. By sin, which which causes a hardening, right? So so this is the thing. And then he also uh, lays down certain instructions um, in verse uh, verse six, uh, sorry, chapter four, and also uh, verses one onwards. 
it's again um, it's it's about wrong doctrines and uh, let's just go through that now this spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies in hypocrisy having their own conscience stirred with a hot iron and uh, you know these are some teachings forbidding to marry commanding to abstain from foods which god created uh, to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Okay, some of those things, right? For every creature is good and uh, nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay, verse 6. Um, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Okay, if you instruct your the brethren, the the ones who are there, if you instruct the flock, in other words, um, you will be a good minister, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So these are, again, some instructions to Timothy. Uh, they saying you will be a good minister, nourished in uh, faith, nourished in these words, and also the good doctrine which you have carefully followed reject profane and old wives fables and exercise yourself towards godliness okay uh, not only are you discerning and accepting but you also need to you know surgically reject those things which are not uh, in accord with godliness right and exercise yourself towards godliness um, then he says uh, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable in all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially those who believe these things command and teach. Okay, so there are certain things that. Um, he says, you know, you command. So it's a mixture of commanding and teaching. So commanding is, no, don't do it. Teaching is, let me explain why you should not do it. You know, ex let me explain why it is bad. Like command and teach, right? Um, verses 12 to 16, I, I think we'll just look at that and then we'll close. Um, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Okay, so he uh, mentions uh, uh, six things here: word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay, do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who um, hear you okay um so he's saying uh, so not just the doctrine but be an example in all these ways in all these six ways word conduct love uh, in purity in faith in spirit and also talks about you know what happened what he received uh, from the holy spirit you know the gift of which was given to you by, by prophecy uh, with the laying on of hands of the eldership probably at the time of commissioning him right laying on of hands of the eldership don't don't neglect that gift don't neglect that uh, teaching uh, be strong give yourself um, to to reading to exhortation so all this says that uh, you know it goes with uh, the responsibilities or the manner in which one can prepare for spiritual leadership leadership and especially of that of the pastoral ministry right so we um, uh, learn so much from here okay so we'll um, we'll stop here
um, and then uh, we'll continue in the next class. Uh, I'm just going to shut down the recording here. Um,